ghost activity, fringe science, interdimensional beings, psychic phenomenon, and conspiracy theories. Does the truth exist? How close are we to finding it? Come listen and discover the answers yourself. Welcome to the Paranormal MD, where the out of the ordinary is discussed weekly. Join your host, Mary Marshall, and her guest as they inform, discuss, and entertain you. Mary welcomes your input during the program, so call in and let your opinions and voice be heard. Talk radio just got weirder, wiser, and more interesting. Now, here is your host of the Paranormal MD Radio Show, Mary Marshall. Good evening and welcome to the Paranormal MD. I'm Mary Marshall, your host, and it is my pleasure to be here with all of you tonight. Thanks for joining me here. I want to let you know that the guest for this evening is Susan Sinclair, who is an ordained minister, shamanic practitioner, sacred dancer, multi-instrumental musician, which I have to ask her about that, uh, a natural crystal intuitive. She is a, a Reiki master uh, that is certified in sound bars. Her mission is to spiritually awaken people and clear the energetic interference that has kept them stuck in an un- unhealthy state. And here's the really cool part. During the broadcast, uh, when Susan joins us a little bit later in the show, she is going to be conducting a brief live for all listeners guided journey to get their personal spirit, uh, guided journey to set up their personal spiritual protection. In this guided meditation, Susan will walk the listeners through a process that c- creates a completely customized protective field around them. Uh, well, I'll ask her about this so you'll we'll all know what we're getting into. Um, but I think it's very, very cool that she's going to be doing this for us. Um, also, Susan will do an on-air intuitive interference scan for a few call-in listeners. Um, and on top of this all, Susan is going to be announcing a special free gift uh, for for one lucky listener. Um I think this is sort of connected through her website, so we can find out more about that. I do want to let you know, though, um, that for this on-air intuitive scan, for a uh, couple of the call-in listeners, I want to remind everybody um, that when exactly you are to call in to win your personal interference scan uh, will be announced later on during the show. Phone lines will not be open nor will calls will be taken. They, so don't try calling in early or anything. Uh, so no calls will be answered except when it is announced, when I announce that phone lines are open and now is when the listener should call in to win. So you will kind of want to stay tuned for this. It's going to be a very interesting show. Um, you know what? And every week I say this, but I really, really do mean this. The the invita- invitation is is sincere. I I really want to take this time to personally invite those of you who are listening who are not in the chat room to come join us in the unexplained chat. Um, it is slowly. I always say this, but it usually is the beginning of the show. Slowly filling up in there, um, and and well, you know, come on over, take a peek in. See what's going on. You're there with like-minded people, the, you know, for those who, that are listening to the show just like you. So you can make comments. You can talk about what we're talking about on the show. You can pose questions in the tra- chat room to be asked of the guest. or And your chat master, Pam, will relay your questions to me and, and basically ask for you. So if you're shy, you don't like calling in, this is the way to do it. And don't forget... Another yet reminder, go to the ParanormalMDRadio.com and sign up for the Listener Roundtable Discussion Panel. This is your opportunity to be part of the show and voice your thoughts and opinions on a topic you may have a special interest in. You will join me and a couple others live on air during one of the broadcasts. 
Uh, you can check out all it. There's different topics that are listed right there on the home page, and you can sign up to be a guest on the roundtable discussion panel. Um, again, go to the paranormalmdradio.com, and the form is on the home page. The next roundtable discussion panel is scheduled to air live on July 31st. So go sign up, join us, let your opinions and voice be heard, and, um, you know, join in one of the Listener Roundtable discussion panels. Um, they're, they're fun. We have a good time. It's a just casual conversation, not looking for experts, just opinions. So now let me introduce you to your chat master, Pam. Hello, Pam. Hi, Mary. How's it going? Oh, it's going wonderful. Um, you know, we had, I, Pam knows this, because Pam was, we were going to, which I am going to talk about a couple things tonight. I'm having some issues playing some EVP. I wanted to talk about two different, a personal experience that I've been asked about, and about this case that we went on a couple weeks ago to Red, in Red Cedar, Indiana. And, of course, we did get some really great EVPs. They're not playing right across. I don't know if it's my if it's what I'm doing, something in the system. I, I'm going to try just for everybody listening. I will try to put, play a couple. Um, hopefully they'll they'll work. But I know some of them are so quiet. They're ones that you would normally be listening to with headphones on anyway. I'm not even going to bother trying to play them. So Pam, one of the things I w- first things I was going to talk about was. I had been asked this, surprisingly, a couple times lately. Something came up in which I said, well, I've had a personal experience uh, on Christmas Eve. And I was asked if to kind of explain it. And I thought, well, you know, I just keep going over and over this explanation. What happened? I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do it on air. Um, so here's what happened. And actually, anybody who's listening that has any clue as to what could have made this happen, some reasonable explanation, just bring it up. Um, that would be great. Let me, you know, I want to know. I've actually, um, what happened is, is my father passed away um, October 2nd last year. Um, every single year, all the way through adulthood, I spent every Christmas Eve with my parents and then uh, my mom passed away many years ago and then my father so even when with the kids, as they grew, then they were coming to my house and so on and so forth. So I was out uh, on Christmas Eve with family, came home from a family event and was sitting here. And all of a sudden I get this, my my mobile phone um, ring. It gives a notice that I just received a text message. So I look at it and here's what's odd. It's Seem now it, it seems to have been in dra- not seems to it is in draft mode. So, and it is the message that I sent out the morning that my father passed away, simply saying uh, to you know a few people my father passed away at you know three thirty this morning and blah 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 blah. This is the text message I'm looking at now. If the system had kicked it, now this is where I have seriously talked to uh, different people as far as departments that might be able to, you know, education or something that they might be able to tell me about this. It's possible that the text message, even, you know, two months later, more than two months, but with three months, doesn't matter, three months later would kick back, could randomly kick back a text message I sent. I would get, that's an absolute, it's plausible, it could happen. I don't know anybody that it's happened to, but I'm, but it certainly is possible. What made this particular text message odd is it was in, um, draft mode. Uh, I don't know what draft mode is. Well, like when you go with the field that you, that's blank, that you go to text somebody in. And then you tech, you write in your text, and then you push send. And then what you send, that would be your regular message. While you're texting it, while you're typing in that field, that's what I'm looking at. 
as if it was a text that never got sent. Like as oh, if I prior to being sent. Okay. Right. So it wasn't coming from a person. It wasn't coming from me. But yet my phone rang, got a text message. I look at it. It does appear to have been, you know, some sort of something from the system that I use. And I'm looking, but it's in text mode. I mean, um, in draft mode. As if it was a text message I was ty- just had typed out and hadn't yet sent. Never mm. seen it like that. Like I said, if it was in, if it wasn't in that particular mode, I would have said, eh, you know, possibility it could kick back later. Co- coincidentally, you know, coincidence, yes, maybe, but this, no, everybody I talked and I think put this to um, a couple of like, you know, an audio engineer. I put it to somebody who worked for a phone company. I've worked, you know, that kind of thing. And everybody's like, oh, no, that I have no explanation for that. <laughs> that that's not right, you know, kind of a thing. So being who I am, um, I was looked at it and thought, huh, that's really odd. And was like, wow, I wonder if you're here. So I ran upstairs and grabbed two audio recorders because that's what I do, and set two of them out. One of the recorders picked up two EVPs, and I want to play it for you. And what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do with these, is I am going to take the, all the, the ones from this story and from the next and post them um, on the website, on the Paranormal MD Radio website, so that people can go and listen with headphones or maybe the sound will be better. I don't know why they're not coming across really well. Unfortunately, I can't play it for you because I, I did test this out already this evening. Um, and the one message is a male voice, but I, I'll be honest, does not sound like my father or any family member that I can recognize. Um, it says, pay attention. Um, the other one is simply as if, you know, when you're trying to get somebody's attention and you're like, you know, like, come here, you know, like, come here, finger, you know, kind of motion. It's just a very clear verbal one, though. It's not just a rant, some random sound. I've listened to this whole thing. The, the, there is nothing else on there. The interesting part, too, is is with the pay attention, it is within the human uh, male voice spectrum or and voice spectrum because you can sample throughout and you can test it and the rest of it is not matching, you know, the, the, the frequency which it's going on. That's very clearly different. Uh, when I set these recorders out, I wanted I was really careful though because I I didn't want to be inviting anything in to my home. So I'm like, you know, hey, Dad, if it's you or my my brother, um, also uh, passed away several years ago at 39. Um, so I'm like, Mom, Dad, Bill, if it's you, you know, I, I'm not asking you any questions. I'm just gonna put the recorders here. If you got something to say, got a message, leave it. So that's what I did. And then sure enough, there was these two. The second one is interesting only because with the, you know, getting somebody's attention that, you know, like kind of sound you would make, um, Mm -hmm. is that when I was telling the story to uh, my cousin, who's now a very good friend, but used to be very good friends with my, my brother that passed away. They grew up and they were all through adulthood. Um, when I was telling him the story, he came to me. He came to me and said, um, "That's your brother." And I went, "What?" He goes, "He used Bill used to do that all the time." I'm like, "What?" I and I still honestly do not remember this. But he's like, "Oh yeah, he used to do this," and then he'd do the finger thing, you know, come here, okay. So now I'm now telling my other brother. Um, who is living, um, obviously, if I'm telling him, um, the same story. And I was telling him what my cousin said, and he said the same thing. He goes, that's right. He did do that. So that's the story. Um, I'm just really kind of relaying it because it had been asked a few times, and I thought, I don't want to keep typing this out, so I'm just going to say it. This is what happened. <laughs> you know, kind well, of. It's pretty cool, but here you thought it was your dad, and ends up it is more than likely your brother. 
or was it both? I, I just say the reasoning of my dad was too newly on the other side. He was 92 when he passed, almost 93. Um, there's no way technology. <laughs> He's probably still trying to figure it out. <laughs> How yeah, do I heck, my dad's still living and he's trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, he's probably telling my brother, you know, like, just used to it, tell her. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so that that's kind of what was uh, happening with that story. So, unfortunately, I cannot play the EVP, but, um, you know, we'll, um, I'll, I will post them. Um, For those of the chat room, I've posted posted your website so they can go there to listen to them. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, post. Yeah, put it in the chat room, and then that way they have it and and all that. Um, but I did specify they need to wait until after the show to go listen to those because we want to <laughs> keep them here. <laughs> um, I have been gener- It has been generally. I'll get this out. Generously offered. I can try to play one of these if I can try to get it over here I'm going to see if I can do this but then the other thing while we're doing this um, the investigation at Red Cedar now we got about yeah and I think we only got up to like the vacuum cleaner story um, at that point but you know it uh, you know I'm not we can continue on and if you if you want to add things in of what you felt about the place or it was an amazing place i'm so thankful that we were invited to go and investigate there and hopefully can go back someday because there was just some things there that you cannot explain why they happened and i think from my own personal experience i haven't done a lot of investigations but of all the ones i've done on I'd have to say that was the most active in which I knew it was active at the time, if that makes sense. Yeah. It was just a neat, cool place. Yeah, exactly. It it was. Um, You know what I'm going to try to do, and we're going to go back because I I really, we're going to try this to see if we can play this pay attention one. Um, We're getting, I'm getting it over and, then my sound engineer has been just graciously offered to try to do this um, last minute, cool. so I'll try to do that, um, which I thought was pretty cool. And hopefully, hopefully it'll work. Um, in the meantime, I am going to try to play one myself. Now, this is actually from the Red Cedar, um, and this is simply just the ghost cat that's supposed to be there. So it's just very quiet, but hopefully you will hear it. All right, here we go. Could you hear that at all? No, I don't think you even heard it, did you, Pam? I did, but I knew what I was listening for, so I don't know if it's fair for me to say (laughs) I did. (laughs) All right, let's try this one. This one's a little bit louder. We'll give it a shot. Um, so give me this. Let's try this. Can't see one. We'll see if it goes. And if not, we're just going to. And this is uh, actually me and I and then uh, Sal talking, I think, at some point. One of the chatters said they heard it. They- Were you able to hear? No. Nope. All right. All right. We're going to get rid of that one. Uh, okay. The we're going to ch- say they heard it. Oh, really? They heard the can't see? They heard the cat. Oh, no. They heard the cat. Heard the cat. Okay. All right. We're going to try to play this one uh, that says pay attention. You're going to get a lot of background um, because, unfortunately, the one that did pick it up was the one closest to the air vent. I, re- I you know, I really kind of was like, ah, I'm not going to get anything. So I didn't even think. Um, I'm just n- nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <not gonna> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know why. All right. They did hear it, though. Well, that's kind of good. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. Maybe they're hearing it. Uh, oh, you know what? I just looked up and just got notified. We need to take a break. So everybody stay tuned. We will be right back. Grab a drink. Get a snack. Ready yourself. Settle in and down for the rest of the show. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back. I'm Mary Marshall, your host, and you are listening to the Paranormal MD Radio Show live on the... So now, what I do want to get into, we're, we're going to try this because now they're, we're hearing back from, our, from the awesome people in the chat room that is, in fact, saying that they were able to hear things. Um, so I'm going to give it a shot. And I'm going to try playing the pay attention one. So hopefully this will uh, will work. Now that I played that twice, and I'm going to try one other um, original version, if you will. Um, and there's going to be a lot. We'll, we'll see if this might work. Try this one. That one's even quieter. And what I meant by original is that one was a little bit, well, sometimes I you know, amp them up, and that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Sometimes it'll blow it out. So I don't know if they were able to hear, but that was the pay attention. Um, the other one, now let's see if we can get back to... We in the at the Red Cedar. Some of the things that were interesting. They do have a ghost cat there, which you, everybody just kind of heard. And um, I have to say, I think that might be my first or my second. Maybe about ten years ago, I think I did get a cat meow or EVP. Here, the thing with the EVP though, it wasn't a true EVP. The cat, it was actually an um, oral, meaning that it. Um, Marcellus heard it at the time. Uh, Pam thought she heard something. I did not hear anything. We were sitting around um, a table. And so it was really cool, though, to be able to catch what they heard and really hear it much better. So the cat is not a true EVP because if it was, that would mean that we did not hear it at all at the time. And that was not the case. We did hear something. Or, or two of the three heard something. Um, the other one, we're going to give a shot and see if you guys can hear this one. This one is um, what, and I, I'm going to kind of explain, meaning what you kind of need to listen to because you're, there's talking and things going on. So I'm going to be like, oh yeah, I hear that. And it's really us just talking. Um, <laughs> you hear movement, and we're you're going to hear all. There are three of us in there. We were outside. You will hear us from through the window outside. You will actually hear my big mouth laughing after that big uh, laughter on my part. Um, you will hear a whispered no. Then you will hear a Mary. Again, it's very uh, not a super clear class A one. And then, which I really hope this comes across too, Basically shuffling and walking, almost as if a door walking, stair movement. Nobody's there. So we'll give it a shot and we'll uh, hopefully this will play. This. So it's really quiet. I'm hearing it even quiet through my heads, and I don't know why. So I could I, hear it, but again, I know what I'm listening right. for. And I tried to amp up the no. It's like a no kind of. That was me, people. <laughs> oh, they heard it. 
Oh, they did. Okay, I'm gonna play. Three I'm people gonna said they heard it. All right, I'm gonna loop this, and I'm gonna try. I don't oh. know if this is gonna blow it out, but I'm gonna try to make it just one more time, a little bit louder, and we'll give it a shot. <laughs> Okay, so that's that one. And then we, uh, let's see what this one is. This one is the a whisper in here, too. So we'll give it a shot and see what uh, two whispers. I hope that didn't play right. I'm isolating it. This is because there's a lot of walking and movement because I wear body mics, so that's where this is coming from. And and if you could hear this, it's saying camera. Um, so that's uh, was kind of interesting. And then there was another one. And what was interesting is is that I could hear the second like slight whisper on this one. Um, after this camera, and then there's a, a, a slight whisper, if you will. Um, what was interesting about that one is this, they came out on two different recorders. I was able to hear it better on um, on the other one versus, versus uh, the one that we're on. And let's see if I can grab this one really quick. And um, Oh. Which is the can't see one. And where did that go? The can't see. But here's, all right, while I'm looking for the can't see, this is an interesting one. They had this as a museum on the first floor. And I really encourage people, because this place does seem to have a lot of paranormal activity. So if you're interested in investigating, by going there for an investigation, you can help bring in some money and funding that they need to continue because the whole second floor is just there's nothing up there there's it's under construction although some of the rooms are filled with some items that they intend on using um you know it's it's empty right now so i really would encourage you to go there so downstairs in the first floor level there is a military room and I went in the military room, and this was at the very end of the night, and I received uh, this EVP. I asked how many stars were on the flag. I didn't specify what flag. Um, and the answer comes back, one. So I'm like, well, that kind of makes no sense until I looked up what one star is. It's the military. It's one star flag. They have it. They use it. So I'm going to play this. How many stars were on the flag when you were alive? Now let's play it again. And that was the one. So it helped when I went and sometimes when you think something doesn't make sense and you go and look it up and sure enough in here I find out this is, you know, the military thing. So um, that was kind of interesting that that happened that way. And what I would say that's what I love about Mary's investigating techniques. She follows up on things and finds information that the typical person doesn't do who would have gone and looked up the flag information and known that well probably lots of people <laughs> I, don't know. I don't think so but that's what i love about being involved in your group and and being led by somebody who knows the proper ways and isn't just a quote ghost hunter to go out there and see a ghost oh thank you that was really nice. <laughs> and I well, went totally, totally mean it because it is. I mean, you, I mean, your classes and everything that you teach is one thing, but to be involved on your team and actually see it put in action, it's just amazing. You, I learned so much from you, and you do go beyond what any of you, like on the TV shows, how much of them would have gone and looked that up. They look at the stuff ahead of time for the show, but would they have gotten an EVP and then afterwards gone and found out that there was a connection to the military? I guarantee you they would not have. 
Unless, yeah, and le- and I think it is too. If if somebody was familiar with that, they might just know. Some people would. I mean, I just I would think if you're in the military, especially if served, you would know this, and you will. And, and you know what? And if you go look it up, you would then recognize. Like, oh yeah, I have. You would do see these on the uniforms, you know, the, not the battle, you know, um, but their uh, dress. So. Yeah, I mean, so it did apply. All right, so we're going to play one more. And this, and thanks, Pam. That was really nice. Um, that there, this one is simply can't see. Um, and it's interesting because this is the second half of that other EVP. The one said um, camera, and then I could hear something. But on the other recorder, we got can't see. What was interesting about both of these is I had just gotten done Say, saying to him, oh, don't forget your trail camera. And then you hear camera and can't see. And, you know, so I'll play this. And that's the one I think everybody thought that they could hear before. So I'll leave that one be for now. But um, again, I just wanted to finish up because we did talk about this and I was like, oh yeah, I'll talk about it more and we didn't get the opportunity last week. So I was like, all right, I got through this audio too and thought we should probably, you know, mention some things about it as far as, you know, the vacuum cleaner and the spiking and is it magnetized or not and, you know, that all that stuff that we were talking I about. I don't think we actually talked about that on the air. We talked about it a little bit in the chat room, but I can't remember. You might not. Mentioned it. Yeah, because I know sometimes when you do get involved in the conversation in the chat room, you aren't, you guys miss stuff. Because like sometimes somebody will think I haven't asked a question, but it's really have asked the question, may, you know, was already part of it. And they're like, oh, I didn't hear that. So maybe that was it. Um, yeah, but we were talking about that. And then what was the other? There was a couple other strange things that did happen there. Um, My audio mysteriously shut down for several hours that I didn't know. Yeah. And I say mysteriously because the way I have, I wear it so that I can't bump it and accidentally turn it off. And yet it turned off and it wasn't the battery because I... When I realized it was off and I hit the play, it then continued, or the record, it then continued to record for another four hours. So how do you explain that? It's just weird. Yeah. It, it is odd. And you know how I am about that stuff because I'm still always like, we don't know because, you know, if it was sitting on a table, you know, and that kind of thing, and there's, and I know, I, I totally get it, Pam, meaning I know that, it's really unlikely it's that this would have happened, but there's always that chance. And if there's a chance, you have to, you know. Right, and I agree with that. That's why I say mysteriously, because I just yeah. don't have an answer for it. Um, one of the other things that um, Sel just pointed out that was really very strange was the geophone. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. That, <laughs> can't explain that one. Yeah, that was another one. Um, we had that where with the like the ge- uh, geosci- I call because everybody's got different names. Geosizer because um, it, it measures seismic you know movement. It, it, earth is rattling, shaking, anything that's gonna. And so you get the lights, and you were watching the monitors and seeing it go off, um, and nobody was there. That was the only time it did that through the course of the evening that we know of thus far. We have not gotten through all the, um, whatchamacallit, video yet, the though. Video, yeah, I have to go to the video. But that was very weird. For those that don't know, it the, it has lights on it, and when it detects movement, the lights go off, like blink on and off. And this particular unit, like Mary said, we did not have any knowledge of it going off all night. And when I was watching the monitors, I had been watching for a good 10 or 15 minutes, and it was just, not no lights at all, and then all of a sudden it just started going, and there was no movement around. And when Marcellus went to check it out, 
as he came around the corner, essentially this unit should get stronger with his movement. And in fact, it did the opposite. It just stopped working. So it was yeah. just a weird thing. Yeah, which it, <clears throat> exactly. It should have, if anything, been set off more by his movement starting to in approaching it. And it didn't. It's funny because now I'm sitting here thinking, and I am running a little bit of blank about some other things that did happen there. Um, there were other cool experiences. I just, they're just not popping into my brain at this moment. So um, we'll probably, uh, I'll post whatever I get, I think, on this particular one. Um, we put on the website. People can check it out, too, that way and listen to them. And then, you know, like I said, if you're interested in a new place that you may have not been to before for public uh, public team investigating, um, the I think it's officially called the Lake of Red Cedar Museum. Um, so you can check that out. So yeah, it was it, it, like I said, all in all, it was pretty cool investigation. Um, the other thing. That I, we will hit this briefly, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even gonna do it. I'm not gonna play my weird world music. I'm gonna miss it though. <laughs> <laughs> but because we're we're only got a couple minutes left, um, we have other things that we're gonna talk about. We'll talk about that more on next week's show. Um, a whole slew of stories, but this particular one. Uh, to appease one of my listeners, and he, he'll know who he is. Um, he actually was really nice. He brought up the story, and I thought, yeah, let's let's bring this up. Um, it has to do with the Slender Man. It's behind the online monster cited in Wisconsin stabbing reporting. This is the story. Two young girls in Wisconsin were arrested this week after allegedly stabbing their friend 19 times in an elaborately plotted and premeditated attempted murder. The victim is now in critical condition. Police say the stab wounds were millimeters from killing her. Um, police also say her attackers, both 12 years old, claimed they tried to kill their friend in order to please Slender Man, a demon-like character that has been floating through the Internet since around 2009. They thought her death would appease Slender Man, who would appear and let his proxies live with him at his mansion in the woods. They thought the sacrifice of their friend would protect their families from him and allow him to come out of hiding. Instead, they are now facing dozens of years behind bars. Let's be perfectly clear. Slender Man is not real. He was made up by the Internet with absolutely no factual grounding since his imaginary creation he has become something between a, a, a mimi i'm probably saying i don't even know what that is i think i don't know what that is an urban legend and spooky campfire story um they basically he has a facebook page that says some say i'm evil but i all i ever wanted was a friend i think a few dozen casualties are to be expected during the quest for friendship. Um, how this all started is in June of 2009, a Photoshop contest on the website, and this guy named Victor Serge, whose real name is Eric Noonson, posted images of this child-stalking creation. It has since then taken on a life of its own. Um, it is now inspired everything from fan art, illustrations, 3D puzzles, mockumentary, and, you know, similar to what happened with the Blair Rich Project. So um, that's that crazy story for the evening. All right. We're going to have to prepare here. Take a break. We're going to take that break now, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Mary Marshall, your host, and you are listening to the Paranormal MD Radio Show. 
live on the Unseen Channel. If uh, you would like to call in a little bit later on, the phone lines will be open. Uh, right now, we are not taking any calls, but I will let you know when you can call in a little bit later on to win your personal interference scan. Um, and so that you understand exactly what an interference scan is, let me first introduce you to your our guest for this evening. Uh, her name is Susan Sinclair. She is an ordained minister, shamanic practitioner, sacred dancer, and musician, a natural crystal intuitive. I'm going to ask her how to pronounce the names, particular names of the Reiki master here. <laughs> and she is certified in sound and energy healing. Um, her website address is Susan Claire, which is uh, Sinclair, S-U-S-A-N-S-I-N-C-L-A-I-R dot org. And that link will also be posted on the guest uh, information at the Paranormal MD Radio website. So without further ado, hello Susan and welcome to the Paranormal MD. Hello, Mary. I'm so happy to be here with you. Thanks for making the time to talk with me, and I'm really glad to share this time with you and your listeners. Oh, thank you. And and, and I thank you so much for, um, you know, generously outreaching to the listeners with, you know, with with what you've offered. Um, uh, it, it really says a lot to me. Um, I have a, a few basic questions. I'm sure the listeners are going to want to know this, too. Um, okay. What is, what, can you explain to us what being a crystal intuitive is? Yes, I hope I can explain it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what an, in, an intuitive is obviously someone who is receiving the information, not necessarily through conscious study or academic research, but sort of directly from spirit or from uh, the source itself. So for me, what happened after these Reiki attunements, I somehow began feeling in tune with and getting information from crystals just, just directly, just by holding them. I could feel sensations from them. They could answer my questions, yes or no. I would get a, one sort of sense for yes, one for no. So I actually began a process of communicating with what people would just call rocks and stones and crystals. And I've learned that, you know, there are many people who make an extensive study, and I honor the fact that they do this kind of study about the uh, physical properties of crystals and how crystals interact with the human body, how crystals can conduct electricity and information. And, I mean, knowing what we know about quartz, the quartz is in our radios, our computers, our clocks, it's in so many things to conduct information. So that's just, just, just a tiny sample of what crystals can do, but I began to understand that there are beings, intelligences, consciousnesses, if you will, in these bodies of stone, just as there's consciousness and spirit inside our bodies of flesh. Mm-hmm. And so that's how I began to relate to them, just you know, listening to them directly. We actually, Susan and I met at... Um, a conference, and it's funny because you brought this up about with the crystal is that that was part of what I probably talked about. I think at that conference, of, of having to, I'm thinking I might have, I'm, I usually do. If not, it was in class. But I totally agree with you. People really um, don't always understand the property uh, and what there are some real things that we can already relate to um, with crystals. So I think that's really fascinating that you just kind of first happened upon it and then was like, hey, what's going on here? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it seems to be how we learn the best, isn't it? We stumble on something and say, hey, what's happening? And go a little deeper. Yep, that is sort of true. (laughs) Um, Now, this, oh, you got to help me. What type, what is this... Is, I have to. I have to actually back. This is those those two Reiki things. <laughs> yeah, Usui and Amara. Yeah, Usui. Usui Reiki is like the classic uh, style okay. of the classic form of Reiki that was brought to the United States. That's the most well known and most widely taught form of Reiki. 
So people who practice Usui Reiki, it's, it's pretty much the regular Reiki you would see everywhere. Now, like anything, there's been lots of branching off and diversifying and specialization within this general, very general field of energy healing called Reiki. And Imara Reiki is a special version that's a, a suited for distance healing. So it's actually like... Um, a higher vibration or a more amped up version of Reiki that can be more efficiently transmitted over distance. Ah, see, I just, you know, that is one thing that I have not, it'll come, you know, and <laughs> only, I was going to say really studied and gotten into, um, and I know it will. It's just, you know, you can only do so much at it as you go along, you know. Oh, yeah. And one thing tends to lead to another, you know. So no matter what you start off being interested in, you end up branching out or, or pulling in when you realize, hey, I need to focus here. So an attunement, if you have a, a, a Reiki attunement, is, again, you're using your intuitiveness and energy. If explain, I I know I'm not going to explain it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you ask the right questions. That's the whole thing, you know. Asking the right questions, when you get the the answers you need. So, um, um, with an attunement, like with Reiki, you first receive an attunement, and just like tuning, if you tune an instrument, you're changing its pitch to match something specific, a specific frequency so that an A on the piano is really the standard A. It's the same way with our bodies. We're vibrating at specific frequencies. And in an attunement, we are literally tuned up to a higher vibration and put in resonance or harmony with that spiritual vibration. So it's a specific process, and it's like an energy transmission, but it actually sort of tunes you up or winds you up to a little bit higher energy level. And this is what you were using the tuning. You had the tuning forks. Is that what you? That's how because you can strike that note and that frequency. Is that why? That is part. That that's part of an idea. It's not specifically an attunement in itself, but yes, it can have that effect of creating a specific frequency that your body will then start resonating harmoniously with. So it really can actually adjust our physical organs to resonate at a better vibration, to be more in, more in tune with yourself, ideally. I mean, we all have, it's like our body is an orchestra. And when an organ gets out of tune and starts vibrating at a frequency that's not harmonious, that's when we start getting physical symptoms. And these tuning forks and other sound healing tools can help the body get back into resonance in order, in other words, put that organ back on the frequency it's supposed to be on. So then your body is working in harmony and there's nothing out of tune. Oh, okay, that's right. So, and so now sound energy healing would obviously fit into this, but I, you, is that, well, explain it if that's anything different or is that just another part that you've gotten into because the sound bar um, and you're using that for healing, aren't you? Right. Yes. Now, here's the thing. Um, there's many types of energy healing. Reiki is one. Um, the bars, which is a product of access consciousness, the bars is another type of energy healing. And sound healing is using energy but transmitting it specifically through sound waves into the human body or into our into our brain so all of these all of their aspects of energy healing it's kind of like what you're drawn to some people use light for energy healing colors and um, you know and specific heart combinations of colors and to create healing in the body and other people use sound like I do I'm just more of an auditory kind of person so there's all these different, this whole spectrum of energy healing with all these different possibilities of tools and methods and modalities and, you know, there's just so much to choose from. Yeah. The, real, the real trick is discerning what, what do I really want to gain mastery in, so to speak. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, well, we are going to have to take a top-of-the-hour break very soon. Um, before 
let me ask. I think we'll probably when we come back, uh, Susan, um, I need to ask you before we do anything else. You <laughs> have an offer to listeners um, via your website. Um, actually, right. uh, if you want to take a minute and tell, tell uh, the listeners about that, the, free, the special gift. Okay. Well, what I'm offering tonight for listeners is because I work with interference clearing, in other words, releasing energy that doesn't belong in your home, in your property, and in you, I'm offering a free home and property clearing to one lucky listener who subscribes on my website, which you can do from my home page on the right-hand side. Just put in your name. I'd like a first name and last initial, if you would be do, doing that, and your email. And I'll, within the next 24 hours, by Friday at midnight, and then I will draw the name and the email of the lucky winner and let them know so they can schedule their free home and property clearing. Okay, so they got to go to your website, too. This is important. And we'll give that out again in the link. Um, But I am going to need to go take that break. Uh, When we come back, Susan is going to first perform an interference scan on me so that um, you at home can... And I can tell you, you know, that I haven't exploded and, and I'm feeling great or something. Afterwards. It won't hurt a bit, I promise. <laughs> so everybody stay tuned and smile. You're awesome. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the second hour of the Paranormal MD radio show here at the Unexplained Channel at WHVR 24.7, The Stream. I'm Mary Marshall, your host. Um, Susan will be doing a an on-air intuitive interference scan for a few call-in listeners in a little bit. I will announce when to call in for your free interference scan, um, and which I will be announcing that shortly. Uh, when you should call in and... So I'll say, call in now, people. But right now, we have a few other things that we need to do first. Um, Susan, I um, have a... Actually, before we jump to that interference scan real quick, I do want to hit a question, couple questions that we've received already. Okay. Popular girl. you got a lot of questions here. Oh, that's uh, fabulous. <laughs> Do you work with Reiki? Can and um, your do you feel your work with Reiki can enhance your chances with speaking with spirits? If an average, I would think if like an average person and for for yourself, do you think once you start doing that, did it enhance your uh, chances of interacting and speaking with spirits? I would say generally, absolutely, because it is um, a cleansing of your own energy and a refining, and the attunement process really is meant to connect you to what we would call source or the divine or, you know, universal source energy. It is intended to create that clearer, stronger connection. So absolutely. In fact, that's what turned it all on for me. I'm not saying Reiki is the only way. But it's a very safe and gentle type of energy work and attunement that's really, really a great introduction for people to get a clearer connection to spirit. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it. yeah, I mean, and you hear it, and not everybody is the same, but it's certainly, um, I think it's just overall beneficial. So it's it's always going to be a good thing to do. So I can be oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, what I would suggest... I mean, again, Reiki is just one of many options. It's If you're seeking, check Reiki out, but be open to other things because there's reconnective energy. There's um, many types of, of ways that reconnect us to spirit. And what you want to tune into is what you're really drawn to, what really seems interesting and, and magnetic to you because that's what your body and your soul are asking for. So it's not just what's out there, but what... What really feels great to you, what's attractive to you is what's going to be the thing that turns us on for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also have a message. Um, Al from um, Willow Creek is in the chat room. He says hi. 
Oh, hey, Al. I thought you said you were going to be on. I'm so glad you made it. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, and I did a great. I had one of the most profound experiences working with a team to actually do a property clearing for Haunted Willow Creek Farm. And I know that Al was really, I mean, what he said to me, he was very pleased with the results because what happened, he wanted to keep the activity, the paranormal activity that mm -hmm. was important to him and to his visitors, but he wanted to keep it clean so people didn't get disturbed or upset by negatives or unpleasant beings, and that's exactly what happened. His farm is still very active paranormally, but it's good, clean activity that is wholesome and just helps people explore the paranormal with a feeling of safety. That's, uh, you know what, and thank you for sharing that, because, um, you know, he has actually mentioned that um, in the chat room about about the about you coming and doing that, so he obviously was very thrilled and grateful. So it was an honor to work with him and all those amazing beings that shared the space with him on the farm. All right. So, do you think uh, we should do an? Do you want to do an interference scan on me first, and with, so that everybody at home can listening uh, knows what they're they're in for? Well, no, it but it's really, it's really actually quite painless I, and often very enlightening and kind of surprising. But here's the thing. When it's true and surprising at the same time, that's how you know that's pretty much spirit at work. Okay. We're not going to have, like, feel like my deepest, darkest, darkest secrets, are we? Absolutely <laughs> not. This is all this is. This is about uh, the, the person on the other end is pretty much just relaxing and and receiving all what I'm doing on my end is I'm opening this clear channel to spirit and to their own guides and angels and those beings are what kind of reveal to me what's interfering so I'll when I'm looking at you Mary looking at you energetically you know because obviously I can't see you physically but I'm looking at your energy I'm looking at your soul which just in the sense of I'm seeing what might not belong there what kind of energy might be kind of knotted up or tangled up. That's how it tends to look to me is knots or tangles or um, dark patches, just something that it's like that's not part of their natural energy. What is this? And then we, we identify it. Before you get started, I, I can't help it, Susan, when you said this, what went through my mind of these dark things that, you know, you're talking about what doesn't belong. I'm like... Oh, boy, this is going to be a while. Uh, that and, and the Sesame Street, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> it's <came> yes. <laughs> That's so true. That's pretty much what we're doing. I mean, yeah, Sesame Street, they, they were more profound than they knew. With that one. <laughs> All right. I'm ready. If okay. you're ready. And I'm ready. So I'm just going to, again, I always ask permission from your higher self to do this scan, to receive the information that's relevant, accurate, and beneficial for you. That will be the truth that you need to know at this time about what might be interfering with you on the spiritual level. And I work with a pendulum, and this pendulum is giving me a strong yes. Your spirit's all on board with this, and we're tuning into the divine. And I ask, all I do is working with the divine. The divine is doing the actions. I am simply the narrator, so to speak. I simply report what's revealed, and then I can explain some of it as we go. I work with about 10 different categories of spiritual or energetic interference for people. So for these brief scans, I'm just going to focus on probably the top two or three that are causing perhaps the most difficulties in your life and try to make the associations between interference and the difficulties and then suggest some ideas for what we can do from there. So with that, we're just going to kind of relax and open up to let spirit in this safe psychic space reveal what what's interfering with Mary. <laughs> Breathing and, and and all here. <laughs> exactly. I'm still, and I would I would probably I, I'm sitting as you were saying these things, and this is you know again that people are listening at home. Uh, when you had first mentioned about 
you know, meddling spirits. I'm over here shaking my head. Yes, you can't <laughs> see, but I was going, yes, I know. And, uh, <laughs> and then the ancestral, the, that was the first person that came to my mind. My grandmother, my father's mother, now, mind you, my father just passed away. He, was, he would be 90, turning 93. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was the youngest of eight children. So my grandmother would be like 130-something right now. My grandmother, not great, my grandmother. Mm-hmm. So, um, but we often, when she came here from the old country, um, had broken German through most of, you know, English, I should say, through most of her life. And um, <clears throat> she, she wasn't, wasn't really known in the family for being the nicest person. Um, I per- and, it, and then it became kind of a joke that I actually started um, because she had she was the white hair and she just you know, just got the accent and she was she used to tell the fairy tales you know of it and they get their toes cut off in the blood and then she would I mean it was just this, you know just and I'm like she's like witch wow. <laughs> so <laughs> wow so, so supposedly too she always kind of knew things that other people didn't necessarily know. So with all of this being said, as things would continue to go wrong in the family and, uh, you know, consistent health issues, you know, generation after generation and just, you know, everybody having just the, it's not literally and not really, but, you know, jokingly, the worst luck, I'm just like, I know it. I know she was a witch and she, they used to be on a farm and this was over in, you know, in Germany. And I said, she's probably got, you know, took somebody's, you know, farm animal and say you know didn't give him it's like give him the cow back please give him the cow <laughs> break this curse i just know that there was some curse and somebody was like and i put a curse on you and your family's family <laughs> you know, oh wow that's, and that's, a, that's so a pretty this nasty is, energy once that gets going and right yeah. it does take some conscious work to undo the effects of that sort of thing yeah so i mean we do d- say it more jokingly but if there was one seriously relative out of everybody I can think that's passed on, that would be the one that would uh, cause the interference. Mm-hmm. And it <clears throat> make, yeah, it makes sense because if she was working with those kind of unpleasant energies and, and putting out curses, you know, stuff like that comes back at you. Yeah. And she might be afraid to go on to the next level because she is anticipating the worst. Because <laughs> she knows. <laughs> She's thinking, I, I know I deserve some consequences <laughs> for what I did. I just don't want to go there. So, yeah, let me just hang around and muck around with my family. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to have to take um, our final break for this evening's show. When we come back, we will address uh, the listeners and callers and the meditation uh, because then we will be break free until the end of the show um, I do want to remind everyone if you've missed part of the show you can listen to it at 24.7 the streams on demand for uh, via the phone app and on that note I will leave you and we will go to break and be right back so stay tuned good evening and welcome back Thanks for joining me tonight. You are listening live to the Paranormal MD Radio Show, and I'm your host, Mary Marshall. Um, I have been here speaking with Susan Sinclair, who um, has just conducted an interference scan on me. It was painless. It was um, accurate. And I, I found that very, very fascinating and interesting. So thank you, Susan, for doing that. Thanks for being open. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, we're we're going to give this a shot, and I'm going to say that the phone lines are now open. So if you'd like to call into the show to win your own free interference scan, call in now. Call in now to be the first caller who gets through will win, if you want to call it that, receive is a better <laughs> word. I like that word better. If you call in now, you will receive a free interference scan. The phone number to call. Now, it's going to be interesting to see if people are going to call, Susan. Because, yeah. I, I, you know, sometimes people want things, but again, they feel kind of like, 
on the spot with the radio and doing things, you know, that way. And they're like, well, I'll just check her website out later. <laughs> you know? And that's totally fine. You know, actually, that is something that I tend to do when when people are interested in working with me. They can call, they can go to my website and ask for a free breakthrough session, which well, is the, well, the breakthrough page, and then the scan well, is something I do. Welcome to the Paranormal MD. You are live on the air. Who am I speaking with? Christopher Fisher from Allentown. Hi, Christopher. I get nice to, to meet you. It's uh, this is Mary. It's nice to hear your voice. I know who you are, Susan. This is Christopher. Christopher, it's this. Help say hi to Susan. <laughs> Hello, Susan. Hey, Christopher. Nice to have you call in. Thanks for doing that. Thank you. So you're interested in an interference scan for yourself? Yes, uh, I'm. I'm curious about it. This first time I've heard heard of uh, that. Well, yeah, I'm, I appreciate the curiosity. That's the way you end up finding out new things. So, let's um, let's get started. All I need for you to do, Christopher, is just kind of sit back and relax for a minute, and I'm going to tune in to your own energy, to your guides and your allied spirits getting permission from your higher self to reveal what you need to know about what's interfering with you. And with that, I'm asking that the three main sources of interference be revealed at this time. And again, like other, like a lot of people, Christopher, the first thing that I get the hit on is meddling spirits. You've got an ancestry that goes quite a ways back in Europe, I'm getting. And far and far back in Europe, sometimes when people were in dire situations and they didn't think God was answering their prayers, they'd open up to whoever would answer their prayers and guess who would step up? <laughs> who? And um, sometimes it was these unfriendly beings because they knew in an hour of need a human would make a, an agreement with them that they could then hold them to for generation after generation after generation. So this is what I'm getting. This is through your Akashic record. This, this part of your records was opened so that I could understand this. Somebody back there in medieval times made that kind of a rash statement and an unfriendly being stepped in and said, ho, 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 here's somebody ready for me. And they attached to your lineage. So they've been following your family line and gathering a few other, <laughs> a few other meddlers along the way. And so right now, there's rather a cluster attached to you. And of course, there's tendrils and attachments to other members of your current family as well. So it's not just you. This is a family thing. Um, did you have any questions about that before I kind of share what else I'm seeing? This is probably, I am pretty familiar with that because I know of an old ancestral curse back in the 1400s of my line. Oh, boy. Yep, those things have more power than a lot of people give them credit for, that kind of energy and the kind of beings that both generate and feed from, that kind of energy. You betcha. <laughs> so it's still going on, but it is something that can be stopped. This can be, this can be put a stop to. There's, there's no reason that you guys have to put up with this any longer. Has the other caused thing, merit, yeah, caused marital issues among my family members, even my distant kin that still live in Europe, have mm -hmm. marital issues too. Yes, and that is a great, that, that's a real common place of manifestation because, of course, human relationships what tremendous generators of energy they are, and boy, mm -hmm. if they can sow strife and discord in marriages, they can feed off misery and frustration and anger to their heart's content. Wow, you spot on. <laughs> so good for you for being open and aware and, and, and acknowledging that. That's very, that's very cool. That's the first step towards changing it. The other two things that I pick up for you are a lot of lost soul attachments, Again, you have a very, I mean, there's, there's a light in you, Christopher, and you're a spiritual seeker. 
And sometimes mm -hmm. that attracts these lost souls who they're looking for light, they're looking for divine energy, and if they're not ready to get it from the divine, they get it from the next best source, which is humans who are really shining their own spiritual light. So you have some lost souls attached to you. They don't really cause a lot of harm, but they just kind of interfere with your own energetics. So it'd be great for them to move on and for you to be free and clear of that. The final thing that, that I sense for you, again, partly because of this ancestral curse, there's a lot of karmic stuff. Karmic contracts, negative karmic energy, a lot of those kind of energetic connections and agreements that need to be cleared because they're holding you back from what you really want to do here in this life. Does, yeah, I does feel that, that they are, too. Yeah, and again, that is a simple process to clear. It's simply a matter of, you know, being in the right place and having someone who can take you into this safe zone where these agreements are made and have them cleared or reworked so that they work to your advantage and not your disadvantage. So the, the great news is that while these things can sound a little daunting or overwhelming, the fact that they show up means they're ready to be dealt with and that it's not a difficult or painful process to deal with them. And it really can create huge changes for the better once you do. So thanks yeah, like for I opening would, up. Thank you. I've been wanting to research that stuff, and you know, I feel that's keeping me from going into my research is these attachments. Oh, yes. They can really just, they just kind of keep you from getting done what you know you want to do. Somehow this, it never quite happens. So that's a very good observation. Wow, you're spot on. Thanks, well, Christopher, for calling in. Uh, thank you so much. It was pretty cool. I'm glad uh, you got some answers that you were looking for. That was that. That was really great, Susan. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Was a very he's a real seeker, and I know he'll get free of this stuff. If I can help him, I'd love to. And if if it's not me, there's someone else. But I I would love to be in on this because this is some of the most rewarding stuff to do is to lift these ancestral curses and release these spirits. I just have to say, some of these spirits are tired of doing this, and they really? like to get out of it. <laughs> but but they need, because they're locked in with very specifically worded agreements, they need someone who understands how to unlock those same agreements on the level that they made them. So it's not something to do by yourself or um, with someone who hasn't got some experience with it. Okay. Well, that's really good advice, too. Um, do you, would you want to try this one more time? If we have ask, uh, you can have caller if you want to call in, and we're going to do one more caller. The first one to get through will receive um, a free interference scan um, by Susan. The phone number to call in is, and the first caller to get through will get a free interference scan. I am going to, while we're, we're processing that with the calls, uh, so if you want to call in now, that's great to do that. Um, I will throw a question out there, but just be aware that if, oh, there we go. Hello and welcome to the Paranormal MD. You are live on the air. Who am I speaking with? This is Patricia. Hi, Patricia. <laughs> do, yeah, um, thanks for calling in. Um, is, do I know you, Patricia? Uh, yeah, I'm in the chat room. Okay. I wasn't sure. And I was looking at it and I'm like, yeah. the question is like, is this the person that I know or, you know, not? So, well, nice <laughs> to speak with you. Um, Susan, Patricia, Patricia, Susan, and I'll let you take Hi, it Susan. away. Hello, Patricia. Thanks for calling in. I really appreciate you opening up to this. Is there anything in particular you want me to know before we start, or you just want me to dive right in? <laughs> just dive right in. All right, then. Okay, so just kind of relax for a minute. As I'm getting permission from your higher self to access this information and bringing in divine spirit to reveal what needs to be revealed here.
Okay, you've got a couple other things happening than might be typical, which is, which is great. We're all unique, and we all have different types of interference working for us. I mean, hey, it's, it's earth, you know. There's, it just happens. Interference happens. It's like dirt happens. So uh-huh. it's nothing to worry about, but it's something to simply be aware of and take care of. So what I'm sensing for you one of the major things that's holding you back, Patricia, is past life traumas and their imprints. Now, for some people, if, you, if, you're, if you're on board with the idea of having past lives, I can go into that more. Does, does that make sense to you? Do you want to yeah. more? Okay. Past life traumas are traumatic events that happen to us in other embodiments, and they leave an imprint. It's sort of like an energetic wrinkle or distortion. Some people say that happens in your Akashic record, so it's like your history gets this energetic tangle or not in it. Some people see it as actually being in the, the energetic makeup of your soul. But in any case, because there's this unresolved traumatic event, this energy gets carried forward with you and continues to distort your energy fields and your reactions to things in life. So the, how this manifests for people is you have this, that a person might have this abnormal fear of something that there's no logical reason for in their current lifetime. There's been nothing to get give them that sense of fear or this obsession or this, um, this sense of anxiety, but it's there. Or sometimes right. people even get physical symptoms, like there was a healer who every time she practiced energy healing got this terrible migraine. And it turned out that in a former lifetime, she'd been an energy healer who was beheaded <laughs> for oh boy, yeah, for not giving the wrong answer or for somehow not doing the healing to the other person's satisfaction. So a trauma happened and that person carried it forward and it was keeping her from living her life purpose. So that's kind of the major thing I'm sensing with you is some kind of past life trauma or series of traumas is affecting you here and kind of holding you back from doing what you inwardly sense is your real calling and purpose. Does, does that make sense to you? Yes. So and those but, kinds of things are, I'm really glad to hear that. I'm glad that that's making sense to you. Um, you may even be able to identify what this trauma might be or something like it. The kind of thing that's triggering you now is probably connected to what happened before. Okay. So you don't, you don't have to answer that if it's not clear to you, but it's something to be aware of because that's where we would start if we were going to clear it. We might start at the present life and work backward. Sometimes we start from the originating incident and work forward. It's just whatever's best for you and what your soul is asking for. The other thing that's really important here, two other, pos- two other things that are strong, negative energetic connections which have to do with bindings for you in particular, binding energies. Other people's expectations or limiting beliefs have got you stuck and trapped, and those need to be energetically released so you can expand up into who you really are. And the other one that I get is the soul fragment thing. So your soul, our souls, some of them are resilient, some of them are more delicate, and your soul is sensitive and picks up stuff and you have a very tender and loving heart, and you've done some soul fragment exchanges with people who were really insignificant to you, both in this life and in other lifetimes. And that can get things sort of energetically tangled because other people's soul energy is not yours. And so that doesn't always set well. It doesn't always help you. Sometimes it gets in the way and it clutters up your energy instead of, instead of being a gift like it was meant to be. So often a shamanic practitioner or someone like me can help you sort out what fragments need to return to others that you've held on to and what from them needs to be returned to you. So you have all of your soul present with you. When people get their whole soul back, usually there's a sense of revitalization. Their energy is up. Their creativity is up. They're, they just have more of themselves to work with. So they feel alive again in a way they haven't before. So that's kind of what I'm getting for you, Patricia. And let me know kind of what's your take on that. Yeah, that's that's uh, pretty interesting. 
<laughs> well, thank you, Patricia. Well, thank you very much. It was nice Gave to hear. Gave me a lot to think about it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that woo-woo stuff, it, it is unaccustomed thinking for people, and it can take a little while to set in. But a lot of times, even like I have said before, if it's surprising but somehow feels right, it's true mm-hmm. for you. And that's where, you know, that awareness is the first step to making the changes you want to make. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank right. you, Patricia. Thanks for calling in. Well, thank you. Y'all have a nice evening. You too. Good thank hearing you. you. Well, I need to let uh, make a little announcement. I just want to let everyone know that is listening. The phone lines are now closed. Um, so... We're not going to, we're that. Well, those are the two we're doing. But what we are going to be doing now is um, a group meditation to clear, which is, is, I don't want to say it's not an interference scan because it's not as personal as what you just did, but it helps with their protection field. Can you explain, um, Susan, what we're, you're, we're, like I'm doing it, you're about to do? <laughs> Well, what I notice, especially with people who are spiritually seeking or active with the paranormal or um, just kind of get involved in spiritual or paranormal activities, is they end up with meddling spirits or lost souls that attach to them because they're not fully protected. Being open is important so you can receive the messages, but being safe and wise in these interactions with these unseen beings who can cause us great harm or bring us great good, that's just being smart. You know, it's kind of like you don't walk out of the house if it's going to rain without an umbrella. Or you don't go walking in mud without boots on. So this is kind of creating our energetic, this very personal, customized energetic protection, like a perimeter around your own energy fields that will keep you safe and that will help you feel safe and strong, even in daily life. I mean, we're interacting with people's energies all the time. And some of that energy kind of leaves you slimed. (laughs) But with this protection activated for you, you will be safer around humans whose energy is not so great or around the invisible beings whose energy is not what you want either. Mm. So that's what I'd like to do for everyone today is, is create, help you create guide you through your process to create your own personal energetic shield. Okay. And I do want to, before we get started, because um, I want to put it out there one more time for anybody that's listening. The phone lines are closed. We will not be taking any more calls for this show this evening. Um, I would suggest put the phone down. <laughs> Sit back and relax and take in this next experience that Susan's going to lead us through as uh, for all of us listening. So I'll, I'm turning it back over to you again, Susan, but I okay. wanted to put that out there. <laughs> yes, thank you, because we are more relaxed if the phone is not in our hand, that's for sure. Exactly. So, exactly. so I'm going to just walk us through this, this simple guided process. And I want to let you know that whatever impressions you're receiving, we all have different psychic senses, and they're all at different strengths. Some of us see visuals. Some of us get a verbal message. Some of us just have a sense in our bodies or simply a knowing when something is happening. And sometimes I'll make a suggestion, and you'll just like it or you won't. Please honor your own sensing. Trust yourself. You and your guides are already in a sort of heightened state of spiritual awareness right here, right now. So trust what you're getting. Trust your, what you like. And turn that into your personal shield as I suggest it and walk us through it. And then I'm asking, and I'll guide us through that, at the end what you want is something that turns this on in an instant for yourself. So I'll guide us to help you create some cues that turn on this protection on demand. Okay. So right now, just go ahead and relax a little bit more. Whatever you're doing, if you're sitting in a chair, if you're reclining a little bit, if you're even lying down, just let your body get comfortable. 
kind of relax your shoulders, maybe move your head on your neck a little bit. Find yourself getting comfortable wherever you are. This is the first step. This is grounding, making yourself very present in your body in the moment. So feel your body, this wonderful physical vessel for you to experience life here with all of its sensations and all of its gifts. Be in your body, breathing in a natural, easy rhythm. And allow your awareness to kind of drop down into the base of your spine and the soles of your feet where you connect energetically into the earth. And just let that connection happen. You may feel something. You may see some kind of connectors, cables, roots, pathways, columns, whatever you're sensing or feeling or even simply affirming, know that right now you are fully present in your body and connected to the earth. This is the first step of creating psychic safety. So simply feel into that and know that this is where you are right now. The second step is what I would call centering. As you're connected to both earth and I would add the heavens, you may feel some energy streaming into your head and down through the body as well as energy rising up from the earth into your body. These two streams of energy are what really nourish you as an energy being here on the planet. So these streams of energy are flowing both upward and downward, clearing out some things that don't belong with you right now. And somewhere in your torso, these two streams of energy meet and mingle, creating a space of greater clarity and brightness and activation. This place in your body would be your energetic center. And wherever it is for you, it could be right down at the base of your spine. It could be in your throat or even in your head. It's normally, though, somewhere in the torso, and you may just feel it. There's a place you're simply more aware of. Or you may see it as brighter and lighter, bigger more powerful, or you may hear some kind of verbal confirmation. Here's your center. Whatever you're getting, trust it. And if for some reason you don't have a sense of clarity, let me just suggest that you place your center between your ribs and your belly button. That is a very normal and typical energetic center for human beings. So it can be your default unless you have a clear sense of it being somewhere else. So now grounded and aware of your energetic center, affirming that you are now connected to the earth, centered in your body, we are ready to create your personal field of protection. So begin by saying to yourself, I am protected. And just notice what might show up for you with those words. Some people get a sense of a light emanating from around them. Other people feel a shape forming around them. Other people simply feel safer. And all of those are legitimate. Those are all great starting places for us to build a more empowered and efficient protection for you. I would, I'm going to suggest that you select a shape, a very specific shape and form. While emanating and radiating light can be protective, in my experience, it's a starting place, and that's the interior of your protective field. But to make a clear, clearly defined perimeter, 
We need a shape that surrounds you and encloses you completely. So I'm going to suggest some shapes. And the one you like is the one for you. Starting with a sphere. Some people might call it a bubble. I would call it a sphere because to me that feels solid and reassuring. Another shape can be a pyramid or a triangle. A separate shape could be a cube or square. Some people prefer a capsule or cylinder. Some people prefer it to be their own body shape, simply expanded at to about three feet out in all directions. So allow a shape to surround you now, the one that's right for you. And let it be fully formed, very clear, very present, standing out about three feet from your body in every direction, top, bottom, front, back, and sides, seamless, unbroken, a very powerful shape for you. I'm getting the sense to even mention a diamond which is like two pyramids, top and bottom. So again, whatever shape feels right, feels safe and strong, that's the one for you. Feel into it, affirm it, and let it be solid around you. And now I'm going to suggest some particular features of this protection that have worked very well for hundreds and thousands of people that I've worked with. One is to coat the outside of your chosen shape with mirrored silver. This silver is like a two-way mirror. It draws in what protects you and feels right, harmonizes with your energy, and it deflects, bounces off what is not right for you, whether it's beings or energy or events. This silvery mirror is your filter, your protection, it's your magnet and your bouncer. Let it be fully present, coating the shape. Inside the shape, the inner layer, I'm suggesting gold. Gold is about divine power. And this gold behind the silver will give you an added sense of empowerment and safety when you are in this protective shape. Other colors that may come to you, purple is a great one because it changes negative to positive. So if you like purple, put it somewhere in your protective shape. It could be between the gold and silver, inside the gold, right around you, any place it feels good. Let that purple turn bad stuff to good stuff for you. Pink is another color that represents divine love. You may wish to combine the pink and the gold so you have the perfect combination of love and power to beat any situation. You may want the pink separate or both. Let that pink settle in wherever it's right for you. And now I want to activate one other feature that I find very useful, which I call auto wash. Auto wash or auto clear is activated whenever you turn on your personal protection and it immediately sucks out whatever negative energies or entities have managed to get into you and pushes them right back outside that mirrored silver back where they belong, which is not with you. I love the feeling of activating auto wash or auto clear and feeling this stuff move off of me and back out where it belongs. So activate that feature, and that's now fully yours to claim and enjoy and play with. The final, the final step is to create a single word and a gesture. To turn this on on demand, I suggest a single word like protect or safe. 
something very simple that you can easily remember and you can say it in a second. The other thing would be a gesture, closing your fist, um, simply smoothing your hand across your leg or across your chest, extending your hand or putting your index finger or thumb together, a simple gesture that, again, turns it on instantly. And now bask in this protected space. This is your safe psychic space. From here, you can open to divine spirit and get clearer, truer messages than ever before. From here, you can interact with even the most challenging people and not get slimed. From here, you can feel safe and strong and wise with the paranormal and with the normal. Activate this before you sleep at night, when you get up in the morning, when you go someplace new, and when you return home. And any other time, you sense some energies getting in that don't belong. I leave you with this gift. We thank the divine and all the beings who assisted us in creating this perfect protection for you. And now we return our awareness fully within our protective shape, within our bodies, reconnecting to our centers, reaffirming this protected space around us, and reconnecting our awareness to the earth and all the parts of our body. If you can't feel it, please wiggle it. That way you'll know you're all the way in your body and back in the present moment. Thank you. Enjoy this protection, and I'd love to hear what showed up for you. And Mary and I will talk about how you can do that. So here we are, back in the room, but um, safer. <laughs> you know what? I, here we g- <laughs> I was talking because I was in the mode. I was in the mode, Susan. I had my <laughs> mic on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I came back, and I'm like... That was wonderful, and I'm talking very calm. I'm like, look at what it's done for me. <laughs> and, and then nobody was hearing me, though. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, goodness gracious. That was wonderful. Thank you. Um, we are going to really, really run out of time. Very, We're like right towards the end of the show here. Um, there's a couple things. I think it would be absolutely fascinating um, if anybody wants to go over to Susan's Facebook page and or mine, tag us and see, you know, like you had just said, what showed up for you, how you felt about this after, you know, after doing it. I'm curious as well. Um, the other thing is, is that, um, Susan, this has just been such an amazing, I think, experience for not just myself, but for the listeners I am going to be, we're going to have to set something up and towards, uh, in a few months or towards the end of the year, you've got to come back on the show. Um, oh, delightful. I love it. There's just, you know, so much that we didn't, you know, even questions too. I just wanted to know more that we haven't even gotten to. But like I said, we are nearing the end, so I need to wrap up the show. Mm-hmm. It is been a great evening and like I said I know the listeners like me have really benefited from this evening with you Susan from your knowledge your skills and your generosity it's it's been a really interesting show so thank you for for being part of it um, thank you Mary I've loved it and I hope people will visit my website if you subscribe within the next 24 hours You'll not only get a free PDF that outlines protection and safety measures, but you could be eligible to win the free home and property clearing from me. That would be awesome. So, yeah, everybody go check out the website. And if you can't remember it, go to the Paranormal MD Radio, which you are familiar with, and the, her li- its link, uh, her link t- uh, to the website is there. I do also want to remind those of you who are listening uh, – to go and sign up for the also the roundtable discussion panel. And if you've missed a portion of the show and would like to hear it in its entirety, please check out the past show section. Um, you can also do that at the Paranormal MD Radio, too. Next week's show, the guest is Bill Bean. Bill is an ordained deliverance minister uh, and was the star of the Discovery Channel, a haunting um, house of dead. Thank you, everyone, for listening tonight and joining me this